Howdy, folks. I'm Brian. I'm Amber. And here's some Reddit. Want to do some finger guns with me? Pew, 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 pew. We're, we're, we're shooting at Reddit, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's channel then, has just gotten very aggressive. <laughs> everyone, and then everyone died. <laughs> All right. Our first story is titled, Am I a jerk for blowing up on my stepdaughter? for demanding the same expensive gift I got for my daughter. So due to a whole lot of TV show worthy drama that's occurred in the last year, I now have a daughter who I never knew existed. It's a very long story and we don't have the word count for it, but I'll try to put the information in that's relevant. I'm a 47 year old male and I have two sons, a 30 year old and a 27 year old, and one daughter, Leela. 22. I met my daughter before quarantine began, and because of the lockdown, she ended up living with me and my sons when the state shut down. So over this time, we've gotten extremely close. My wife died about 10 years ago, and it's only recently, two years, that I started dating my now girlfriend, Kate, a 47-year-old female. Kate has one daughter, Abby, who's a 22-year-old female who I've known since she was a child. But we are not married, and Abby has a father who's always had a majority custody of her. I'm friendly with Abby the way a parent friend would be. But we do not have a stepdaughter slash father relationship. Last week was Leela's birthday, and we decided to have a small get-together. A few family members and Kate and Abby. I decided to get Leela something that she has been telling me about forever. She told me that she wanted a charm bracelet, one that she can get new charms on special occasions, something that is meaningful. She has gone on about this, so I decided to get one for her birthday. I ended up getting her a gold Tiffany charm bracelet with a gold locket charm. This was engraved with her birthday and name. Inside was a picture of her little family. Her brothers also got her some gold charms that were engraved with special messages. When she opened it, she cried, and it was a very touching moment for our family. Well, afterward, Abby came to me and asked when she would get hers, since this is a family thing that all girls will get charm bracelets. I let her know that this was just a special present for Leela, but on her next birthday, I would get her a different bracelet, not a charm bracelet. I thought that was that until later when Leela came to me crying that Abby had tried to take her bracelet because she was more family than Leela is and Leela didn't deserve a family gift because of this. I assured Leela that Abby was wrong and that she was my daughter and very important part of my family. This is the part where I might be the jerk. I took Abby aside and lost it. I told her that she was not my daughter and that she needed to leave Leela alone or she wouldn't be allowed over again. This, of course, made her mother upset, and they both think I'm a jerk. Leela also feels really bad because of everything that happened. I'm okay with Abby thinking I'm a jerk, but I don't want Leela to ever think of me that way. And everyone involved is biased, so I'm here to get an unbiased opinion. And then there's a bunch of edits here. Yeah, I think the kind of the only crucial piece of uh, stuff here is that um, he really has no relationship with Abby. I guess she lives with her father most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so she this is like the first time he's seen her since quarantine or anything like that. So he only sees her very occasionally. So it, they don't they, like even though he says he's known her since childhood, he's barely seen her. So, how old is his daughter? 22. 22? They're both 22. They're both 22. This seems like a really interesting story. I wish I knew the story behind this. I know. It's like he like he's like, due to some soap opera drama, and it's like, okay, just let me get some popcorn and now tell me. And then <laughs> yeah. he doesn't mention it anywhere. And it's like, dude, you left out what we all want to know. You buried the lead. Yeah. Well, okay. So, his daughter is 22. His wife died. 10 years ago right yeah um so i'm wondering if it was like a previous relationship or something like that it sounds like this daughter is the product of an affair because his two sons are older they're 27 and 30 so if they're with mm. that wife um from that wife then yeah that would be she would have been the product of an affair which is probably why it's called soap opera drama yeah so yeah yeah that makes sense so 
I guess, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting situation. Like, I think there's levels of nuance here, and I can understand why Abby would feel jealous. Um, but I don't think Abby should be demanding a charm bracelet either. Right. Well, and it sounds like, uh, at least his impression he gives in the edits and in the com I don't know if he, in the comments, but in the edits for sure is that the fact that Tiffany charm bracelet and he thought that be like if he just offered her a nice bracelet that because it would be expensive, that would be that. Mm -hmm. uh, but this whole harassing Le Leela and being like. Oh, well, you're not a real part of the family. Yeah, the the real part of the family, I think, is where everyone is going wrong here, even the stepdad. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I know that you're saying, like, she doesn't really, Abby doesn't have a close relationship with him. But, like, I still think that was maybe a little bit of a touch over the line to be like, oh, hey, you're not my real family. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't very nice. But, like, I also, like, can give him a little bit of a pass because... She, you know, he has this daughter who is trying very much to feel like is part of the family mm -hmm. and who feels really accepted. And he and like Abby just kind of sweeps in and takes that all away from. Yeah. Her. Well, I think Abby's feeling jealousy is really kind of what yeah. this boils down to. And jealousy makes people do strange things. Yeah. Because generally I'm not on board with saying that someone's not your child. Yeah. But also like he's not even her step parent. And yeah. It's not like him and the mother have been together forever or anything. It's that they've been together for a year and he hasn't seen her this entire time except yeah. for... So, okay, his current relationship, they've only been together for a year. I think it's at a year. And, but he's known Abby since... Since childhood. They were friends they were... before they were lovers. I see. Thing. Yeah, okay. I mean, I can see... I can see where he would definitely be saying like you're not you're not really my stepdaughter because like if he's only been dating this woman for like a year then yeah. i mean well it's... we can scroll up and make sure i was right about that i'm from going off of memory yeah um let's see oh two years okay, okay. So they've been dating for two years so they've been dating for two years so since abby's been 20 yeah and so basically it's like you know he's not really a, been a father figure to Abby, it sounds like. He's never yeah. had the role of being a father. So I can understand why he'd be like, well, I mean, you're not my stepdaughter here. I'll get you a nice bracelet in the future, which I think is really nice of him. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to actually kind of change my position here because if they've only been dating for two years, it seems like she he he wasn't a father figure to her ever there right? yeah he, he can openly say that you're not really my stepdaughter <laughs> yeah well that's the thing it's like it's such a short-term relationship and it sounds like abby has been with her dad for most of it i guess yeah. he's had majority custody of her since she was 13 so she doesn't see her mom a lot yeah and so uh which that's another thing that i wish he'd explained more he like all this like i feel like there's an entire soap opera here buried in this one post and he didn't give us enough information well but, uh, people of YouTube, we need some fanfic. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> Let us know exactly what the deal is with Leela and also uh, what happened with Abby, the incident that gave her father majority custody. All right, let's move on. <laughs> We're going to spill some tea here. What kind of tea am I drinking today? Guess. What kind of tea am I drinking ever? Let me smell it. Peppermint. I'm drinking peppermint tea. I'm not drinking peppermint tea. Amber lost her sense of smell. No. <laughs> I just scraped against the microphone. Hopefully you don't mind that. <laughs> Our next story today is, am I the jerk for bluntly telling the people I work with that no, not everyone in the office can afford to buy a house? Yes. No, I, I'm going to say no from my title alone. <laughs> my coworkers are usually pretty good to work with. The average salary for them is around $100,000 plus. I'm their administrative assistant, and I make about $32,000. Anyway, some of the things they say are kind of weird. For example, this one woman was shocked that I'd never had any of my clothes tailored before. I think they just really get caught up in their own little reality, you know. Like in their world, everyone is beautiful and skinny and rich with purebred dogs and perfect teeth. 
I was helping organize, and someone announced they finally brought their first house. The conversation continued on to them kind of being rude and saying things like, I don't get why people think that no one can afford to buy a house. It's not hard. And someone was like, yeah, I can't imagine being in my 30s and still renting. I'd feel like such a failure. And they all agreed. And they laughed and laughed and <laughs> laughed. <laughs> I don't usually get upset about the stuff they're talking about, but I finally had it and was like, I'm 38 and rent. I don't think I'm a failure. Me too, sister. <laughs> yeah, we, we same, rent. Same. I'm not 38. I'm 30, but <laughs> do rent. One of them was like, oh, well, we weren't talking about you. It's just that like all these people are always go on and on about how it's impossible to save for a down payment. I was just like, yeah, it is pretty hard. It was obvious the whole atmosphere in the room changed. So I was like, anyway and got up and left to the main office to get back to work. Later on, one of the other women in the office came up and was like, Hey, I'm sorry about earlier. I didn't mean to offend you. It got kind of awkward in there. I said, yeah, it was pretty awkward listening to them talk about how they'd feel like a failure if they were in my shoes. She said, that's not what she meant. She actually meant that it felt like I was trying to call attention to the wage gap like it was their fault, and then if I wanted to better myself... They could help me figure out how to apply to schools and work my way up just like they did. I said a kind of half-hearted thanks. It's been weird in the office since then. I know money is one of those no-no topics, but it's not like it's a secret that I only make what I make. Am I the jerk? Forgot to add, we don't have HR and this really isn't an HR thing. I just feel so bad for OP. No, OP's not the jerk. Not yeah. everyone is rich. <laughs> right. Like, these people, like, what fantasy world do they live in? Like, Well, I mean, they live in a, they're, the they're fantasy only... world where they're making $100,000 a year. Like, I just can't even <laughs> fathom that, like, we're trying to save for a down payment on a house. And it is hard. Like, we have to be very diligent with our budgeting to set aside money for it. And we're not even doing that bad income-wise. So it's like... Yeah, well, and the thing is that, you know, the thing, these people, they're earning a lot of money, and they they should be proud of the hard work they do, and I'm not saying they shouldn't, but Assuming also they be, work hard. be a little more sympathetic towards people who aren't earning as much money as you, and don't assume that just because someone doesn't earn a lot of money, that they're not as worthwhile of a human being as you are, because the, really yeah. what it boils down to is, oh, they're tying your value of a human being to how much you earn. Yeah. And that is such a horrible perception of the world. That's not a good worldview. Yeah. You are worth something. You, if your, your value as a human is not tied to a paycheck. Exactly. Well, and the whole thing where they're like, if you want to better yourself. And yeah. Well, like, it's like. She's, she's 38. She's going to have suddenly a, a career shift at 38. Well, this whole idea that it's better yeah. not to be an administrative assistant. Like, yeah. I mean, someone's going to do the administrative work. It's a very valuable job. But like, exactly. You know, exactly. So they're over here looking down on her because she's now making six figures. But if there were if every single person, if there were no administrative assistants, then they would have to be doing their own administrative right. assistant work. Like, and so that's just what frustrates me so much about these kind of things is OP is doing a very important job for the company. Yeah. And these people are getting down on her and acting like, oh, well, if you want to better yourself, like I just feel like I get the sense from this. These are all really privileged people who have never had to like not be privileged in their lives. Like they probably went to like really preppy schools and like their parents paid for everything yeah well i mean yeah we don't know their backgrounds and i think it's hard to guess exactly their backgrounds but um certainly you know i, I growing up you know i was did not have money and did not have resources and I feel a lot more for the person in the situation who's, you know, earning thirty thousand dollars than I do for the person who's earning a hundred thousand dollars. Let's put it that way. Right. I have a lot more reference for that. Yeah, like that's much closer to my lived experience. I never made that much in a year, actually. Because <laughs> I was a grad student for a long time and now I'm an adjunct. So yeah, it's one of those things where it just it feels like 
a lot of our society puts uh, value on how much money you uh, the value of you as a person and how much you earn in, in your paycheck and i think that's very misguided yeah and there's a lot of really important jobs out there that are not that don't pay a lot like take teachers for instance teachers are an extremely important job none of these people would be where they are if it wasn't for teachers you know and teachers aren't paid very well and so that's just it is like you got to understand that not everyone is going to have a job that earns you know you know barrelfuls of cash here. Well, and we should make it like change our society so that people in all positions do like make so that people who are currently making these low wages in their positions can earn more because they are valuable components of the economy. So it doesn't make sense for, you know, this administrative assistant to be making so much less than all her colleagues, whatever they're doing. So, um, but yeah. And that is the topic. Oops. <laughs> the basic race. That is a topic for another day. Yes. <laughs> Our final letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Asking My Husband to Pay 100% of Our Expenses If I Extend My Maternity Leave? Oh yeah, we don't even need to read this one. Horrible. No, I think we're going <laughs> no, to read this No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I get that the title sounds bad, but hear me out, please. My husband, a 32-year-old male, and I, a 28-year-old female, are expecting our first child. Up until now, we've always split our expenses according to the percentage of our incomes. For simplicity, let's say he pays 60% and I pay 40% because this is proportional to our salaries. This applies to our rent, utilities, groceries, insurance, etc. We keep phones, cars, and other things separate. It's very early in the pregnancy, which is why I can't ask my friends and family this. So I'm looking for an unbiased Redditor opinion. We were discussing maternity leave and baby plans, and I told him that I thought I'd wait until the baby was six months old before going back to work and putting them into childcare. Husband said that he read that it was important for the first year of the baby's life that it should be at home bonding with the parents and asked for me to take a year instead. With anti-discrimination law, my job is held indefinitely until the time I choose to return. However, the issue is that I wouldn't be financially wise for me to take so much time off. I've calculated my paid maternity leave, my annual leave, etc., and how much unpaid time I would need to take up until the child is six months old, and I can make it work. Taking another six months off would diminish my savings, especially because my expenses will increase greatly with the baby. I gave two suggestions as a compromise. If he wants me to take six months extra leave, he should pay for 100% of the family expenses during that period. That would be what was mentioned in the first paragraph. Then we would split the baby expenses at the current ratio and I would pay for the things I already keep separate. He should take six months off after the baby is six months old and take care of them while I go back to work. I asked him to think of this as paternity leave. If baby needs one year to be with the parent, then it could be either one of us. I could pump breast milk or, depending on the situation, the baby may be on formula by then. He hates both suggestions. He thinks it's unfair to burden him with all of the family expenses when he's already paying more than I do. That's teamwork. His workplace doesn't have paid paternity leave and taking six months off could affect his career progression and they might replace him. We don't know if his company would hold the job for him as it's too early to approach them about it. I don't understand why I should have to disproportionately suffer financially for the baby. We've always said we'd be 50-50 on responsibility for the kid. Me taking more time off also jeopardizes my career progression, and having a kid already interrupts that. And my savings would be far worse off than his. He feels that sometimes you need to sacrifice things when you become a family. But only you. Yeah. But only you, OP. Only you need to make the sacrifice. But I feel like I'm the only one who's sacrificing here. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. 
When it was just the two of us, expenses were easier. Now that we're going to be a family, it's going to get harder to decipher. So am I a jerk for making these two suggestions or should I be willing to take the extra six months off my own at my own expense? Not the jerk. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a family. <laughs> no. Well, it's, first of all, I want to point out that if they are paying things in according to their income, then once OP's paid maternity time is over, her income is zero. Yeah. So by their own agreement, she shouldn't have to pay additional expenses for either the baby or the general household because she no longer has an income. Yeah, well, exactly. Why are, is he making her dip into her savings to pay for baby expenses? Like, right. this seems so gross. It does, because he continues to earn an income. And I know he's like, well, I already pay more. But it's like, you are asking her to take six months off from yeah. her job, from her progression of her career, and take money out of her savings for the child that you both yeah. created. Well, and it, would, it might even be different if this was something that she wanted to do, but this is at his own suggestion. Right. Like, this isn't even something she wants. She's like, I'll do six months. And he's like, oh, well, can you do a you year? Do a year. <laughs> let's, let's compromise a year. <laughs> yeah. Like, he talks about having to make sacrifices, but it's pretty much like, I want you to do this thing. You need to pay more money. Yeah. Like, he's not open to anything. It's like, they're, they're really, I think OP's two suggestions kind of, hit the nail on the head here exactly like there isn't really much other they can do like she can either get a nanny and you know after six months or she can go back to work or uh and she can go back to work or she can stay home for another six months and have him pay but like i can understand like her paying for expenses at the maternity leave ratio and stuff like that like right. if, as long as she's earning an income i can certainly understand them continuing to split the expenses at the current arrangement level like that seems pretty reasonable and fair in a lot of ways yeah and i'm not saying that splitting a household income isn't fair like lots of families you know choose to do things like this but when it's suddenly if she's not earning an income after six months then he needs to split the, you know, expenses at that ratio. Yeah, so he just needs to take over covering it. And it's just so baffling to me that he can't understand why it was a problem to expect her to keep shelling out money when she's earning nothing. Yeah. Like, it just seems so, such, like, so out of touch with, like, the situation in yeah. at hand here. He's so uncaring for yeah. his wife but, and all of this. But you don't understand my career. My career well, listen, progression. He's not even taking to... a hit in his career. Yeah. Like he's like, oh, I can't do this because I might take a hit, which is absolutely true. I mean, ten men tend to face more, um, have a hard time getting things off like paternity leave. Yeah, yeah. Um, but women take a career hit too. So Opie's already going to be taking a career hit for taking six months off, and he's like, I don't want you. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I agree with what you're saying. I was just saying, why can't he do something like take every Friday off or something like that if he, he really feels like this is that important? Like, yeah. it's not going to be as much time off, but, you know, if he took, like, every Friday after that and then that way he could have, like, a long weekend with the baby, you know, that's still three out of seven days a week to be with the baby. Well, I'm also wondering about this 50-50 split responsibility on the kid because if Opie's yeah, that's home super with the ambiguous. kid, yeah. like, uh, does he expect her to, like, 50-50 once he gets home from work? So, like, she does all the work during the day and then they split it? Because, like, yeah, I don't see how that's working as a 50-50 split when she's home with the kid all the time he's working. Unless he, like, immediately takes over when she right. gets done with, when he gets done with the day and he's like, oh, yep, I'm taking over the baby's responsibilities from here. But from what I've heard of him so far, I don't know if that's his uh, yeah. plan. Well, yeah, there's a lot of issues here to address. And I think that the OP doesn't do it necessarily a great job of articulating, like, all the, all the details. details. And I think there are some important details here that are missing and yeah it but it doesn't sound good for her husband in, in the respect no. that he does not sound like he's uh willing to pull his weight yeah well and again even if you want to do the income-based thing she has no income at that point in time so yeah you can keep doing your income split but if she's got no income yeah then she can't pay anything what's what's uh uh zero percent <laughs> yeah <laughs> She will pay her, pay her fair share, 0%. Exactly. All right, folks. I guess that's all the time we have for today. 
Thanks so much to Amber for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Amber. We are, I appreciate having you on here. I always enjoy recording these episodes with you. It's always more fun to record together because <laughs> then we make each other laugh. Or yeah, maybe exactly. you just make me laugh. But <laughs> <laughs> I was making Amber laugh a lot earlier today. She was having trouble. She was taking a picture with the Pokemon. Yes, it was Fletchling Community Day in Pokemon Go, yeah. and we were trying to get the Fletchling to stand on my shoulder, and it's just this cute little bird. We wanted a cute little bird size, but it kept being, like, giant. Yeah, well, at one point in time, for some reason, like, the AR made it, like, the size of her, and it was just, like, hovering <laughs> over her. It was just absolutely silly. And uh, I just kept telling her that there was a giant bird and stuff like that. And like it was using my head as an egg, you were saying. Yeah, using Amber like as, as an egg. <laughs> So, so. It, you probably had to be there. It's probably not as funny to you as it was to us. It was, but. Yeah, but he just kept making me laugh. And I had to pee. It's like we were trying to take my photos. And I was like, had like this uh, romper on with like a waist tie. So I didn't want to like go pee and come back. I just wanted to get through it. And so I was like, just Brian, stop. You just stop making me laugh. But that's that's the funnest time to make Amber laugh. <laughs> it's when she's suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need your own Am I the Jerk post? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but yeah, so thanks again for joining me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, consider giving me a thumbs down. Look at my weird, awkward thumbs down. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye, microphone. <laughs>